From having to deal with a devilishly annoying monkey and putting up with the harsh consequences of fame. I didn't feel like I really had a voice. What were David Schwimmer's biggest challenges working on Friends? This dude kind of felt the upcoming hardships of the series and rejected the part at first. I know, right? You're probably thinking, what the heck were you thinking, David, you silly goose? That being said, the actor had pretty valid reasons for not wanting to be part of the show. My principles, we're talking about my principles. Prior to joining Friends, he had a miserable experience working on a series called Monty, and it almost ruined acting for him completely. But what was so bad that he almost gave up a life of fame and fortune? It felt like I was not invited to play, uh, Not no, my ideas were not interesting or listened to. David was also hesitant to commit himself to a project that would take up years of his life and he didn't want to risk being contracted to something that made him miserable. I told my agent, I'm, I'm not doing television again. I can't sign and take that chance again because I love, I want to have a voice. Fortunately for David's career, Marta Kaufman, Kevin Bright, and David Crane weren't willing to let him go without a fight. He hit me, hit me! <laughs> The showrunners actually wrote the part just for the actor after he impressed them in an audition for another show they worked on. And they wrote Ross with my voice in their head, so that's hugely flattering and I'm, I, I take that pretty seriously. In fact, they wanted David so bad that he didn't even have to audition for the role of Ross. After sweetening him with some gifts, he caved and the rest is history. <laughs> but who would have played Ross if David actually turned them down? Funnily enough, it was another actor who also appeared in Friends as a love interest of Rachel Green. Yeah, I'm an idiot. I was weak. I, I couldn't help myself. It's hard to imagine Mitchell Whitfield as anyone other than that sleazy, no good Barry. But he came very close to playing Ross Geller. Mitchell was on the verge of being cast, but a last minute change of heart from David ruined everything. And while he isn't mad at David for beating him to the punch, Mitchell told The Guardian that it would have been nice to have landed that part instead. My wife, she cringes a little bit because if I had ended up getting the part of Ross, I'd have made tens of millions of dollars. But I never think about that. Well, at least there wasn't any tension on the set between David and Mitchell after competing for the same role. Does he look upset? Does he look like he was just told to shove anything? Unfortunately, David didn't have such civil experiences with every co-star. Remember that time Ross adopted a pet monkey named Marcel? Guys, there's uh, somebody I'd like you to meet. That would be Marcel. Ross loved that little rascal with all his heart. But the same can't be said for David Schwimmer and his primate co-star. Or should I say, co-stars. Because Marcel was actually played by two different monkey actors, which is a fun fact you might not have known. Anyway, it turns out that David found working with the animals to be super stressful, because the little balls of fur had a tendency to mess up the scenes they were in. Marcel, stop humping the lamp. Even though they were trained, they just couldn't keep still and stick to the script. Here's what David had to say on the matter during the Friends reunion special. Where we're about to do something really funny, but the monkey didn't hit its mark, so we have to start again. Poor Dave didn't hold back airing his grievances there, but he was even harsher towards his Capuchin colleagues in the past. Check out what he had to say when he was still working alongside them. I hate the monkey. I wish it were dead. The trainers won't let me bond with it. They're really, really possessive. It's like, land on your marks, do your job, don't touch or bond with the monkey. It's a bummer. It's, it's more Marcel. <laughs> he keeps shutting me out, you know? He's walking around all the time, dragging his hands. There I thought monkeys were bananas, but it seems that David Schwimmer was even more so while working with the adorable creatures. They really drove him over the edge. Why? Why do bad things happen to good people? And with that revelation, we can say goodbye to our fond memories of one of the most emotional scenes in Friends' mushy history. No, you're crying right now. But what could be worse than working with animals that didn't play by the rules, you ask? Nothing to me, Noth nothing! Friends might be a love letter to cool people spending time with their buddies, but David Schwimmer didn't share this worldview during the height of the show's success. The actor really struggled with fame after becoming an overnight sensation, to the point that he shut off from the rest of the world and became a recluse. Nobody likes change. That's because great fame means big responsibilities, and it can be a lot to handle at first. 
I didn't know what I was taking responsibility for, okay? During an enlightening conversation with a Hollywood reporter, David admitted that his success became detrimental to his personal life, and it took him a while to get back on track. It was pretty jarring, and it messed with my relationship to other people in a way that took years, I think, for me to adjust to and become comfortable with. David also felt that people treated him differently, which he found invasive and caused him to stop trusting people. Carol really messed you up. Excuse me? Yeah, she turned you into this 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 untrusting, crazy, jealous sycophant. However, while David found it hard to let people get close to him, he was a great buddy to his co-stars. During the early years of Friends, he was expected to be the breakout star, which meant that he earned a little bit more than his peers. Guess I just never think of money as an issue. But good old David felt that his colleagues deserved the same pay, and that they'd have more negotiating powers if they were all on the same page when it came to business matters. Absolutely, equal pay. No one has any more, no one's any more valuable than anyone else. So he took a pay cut to make sure that the moolah was split between the Central Perk gang evenly. That's what led to each of them eventually earning over one freaking million per episode. Don't believe us? Well, check out what Matt LeBlanc had to say about David's generosity. He initiated the idea that if we all stick together, Nobody can rattle us, and it, it worked out really good. The Friends cast certainly made some tasty cheddar and had looked out for each other. But does David have any regrets from working on the show, especially considering that it's forever made him synonymous with one character? I think there was a time that it really irked me, but um, I, I guess I'm not anymore. I, I just, life's too short. David has a positive outlook for sure, but he would have changed some things. Grab a box of tissues, people, because David's biggest regret is pretty heartbreaking. heartbreaking. <laughs> Were David Schwimmer and Jennifer Aniston just good friends? Or were they friends with benefits? That's the question that plagued fans for years. I mean, they sure did have a lot of chemistry during the scenes in which they had to smooch each other. But were they really acting? The first season, we I had a major crush on Jen. Um, I... And, there and was I a, think it was we both... So the pair really did have the hots for each other. So why didn't it work out between them? It was like two ships passing because one of us was always in a relationship. So, and we never crossed that boundary. It wasn't all bad, though. Bullshit. <laughs> Like the true professionals they are, they managed to take those deep-rooted feelings and turn them into compelling television. And if they did hook up, who's to say that it would have worked out? If it didn't, then working together could have been awkward. But that didn't stop them from getting close on the set sometimes. Like there were moments we would like cuddle well, on a well, couch we or something. We just spoon. Spoon. Okay. Talk about a missed opportunity, right? Do you think David and Jen would have been as good as Ross and Rachel were? If you like this video, be sure to check out our feature on Jennifer Aniston's Friends experience as well.